How y'all doing? Well, for this video, I'm just going to do an unload unpackaging here. See, today I just got myself a, um, my new order just came in from Iron Wind Metals. It's going to be various sorts of fancy miniatures. Just wanted to I'll show you. It came in today, and there's no battle tech in here. Um, you know, I just chose a selection of the fantasy ones, similar to in my last video. And uh, I just figure you know, I'll just show off and see what you all what I got here. So let's take a look. Okay, here. Well, just to let you know, the inside package is just basically this, and some of these are happy miniatures inside of them because they don't have blisters in them, but a lot of them are. And let's see. It's actually quite a list. I already took my invoice out. You see, it's quite a number of them. But, you know, you got the old-fashioned traditional blister packs of um, Iron Wind Metals. And I'll take each one of these out, put them together, those are necessary, and show you what all I, you know, got all together. Boy. Now, some of these are a bit large, like this guy right here, or Pit Demon. You know, I grabbed him just to see what it was like. Cause there wasn't really a clear picture of him on the website. There's a, that's a flaw that um, Iron Wind Metals have. So, I'm going to take all these guys out, put them all together, so I show you all what I've um, accumulated through here. You know, one way or the other. All right, so I'll get to that. Okay, after a couple of hours trying to bend swords back into place, putting miniatures together and all that, and a little filing here and there, not too thoroughly, because I just want to show them off. I'll show you what I got here. We got this one right here. This is a Brand Mactic Pick King. And I got this one because it's directly taken from a Robbery Howard character, Brand Mac Morn. Sorry if I can't get this into focus. I'm working my camera at an angle. This is a Brand Mac Morn, the last Pictish King. And um there's a short stories of all you know that character and this is a miniature derived taken from that it's not surprising after all for years we've had plenty of uh, miniatures taken from sources like how many times you see um barbarian characters that you can paint directly as conan despite the fact they're not called conan you got various forms of that and of course the gandalf and lord ring so it's what have you you know and again i and there's another miniature i got that is this guy this is just a pilgrim with a sword now this one dates back to like the late 70s, I think, like that. Yeah, 78. But it's just a, you know, basically taken from, again, Robbery Howard's Solomon Kane. So the idea of the adventurous um, Puritan. So a good model of that. This one, you know, obviously lacks the flintlocks that you see so commonly. Uh, not flintlocks, but muskets or the pistols that he had at the time. Um... But it's a nice simple miniature, so if you want something like this is like four dollars and some odd cents, or nearly five dollars for a nice pure miniature. A um, bit smaller scale than most miniatures done these days. I think it's like a 28. Usually, most miniatures nowadays are at 35 or a little bit higher. But a good sub, you know, a good model to represent Solomon Kane. You know, if you just want a good model representing. Of course, again, going to Robbery Howard. You know, he's written all sorts of various stories throughout his short career. And one of them, this is Sword Woman. This is, um, again, sorry for the out of focus here. I just can't constantly readjust my camera. I don't have autofocus. But this is, um, Sword, um, Robbery Howard's Sword Woman. As you can see, you know, um, these are not all stories involving her. This is, you know, um, these are his historical fictions. And one of them is Dark Agnes. And there's also Sonia Rogatine. Um, so if you, if you read something, you know, you can read this. And, you know, if you want a miniature sword representing that, well, here's an example you could use. There's this lady right here. I, oh shoot, um, I have about three female sword fighters, and I'm trying to look on my invoice here which one this is. I don't know if this is Sierra Sword Mistress, um, or Tarna, um, Tarna Brightblade, a paladin, but here you go, um, I can look these up on Ironwind Metals, you know, if you're curious, just give me a timestamp and tell me which one this is, and I'll link you exactly where it is if you're curious. They're all from Ironwind Metals. So, there you have it. Again, another female figure I got, this one right here. Nice and simple, but with two swords, good dynamic pose. But, yes, very nice and detailed as well. Actually, since I got to focus on, let's get a little bit more closer here. Yeah, a lot of good variety of female fighters and so forth. Now, next one here, going back to again the concept of um, uh, barbarians. This one right here, I guess you could paint it as Conan, but here's the reason I got this one right here. Years ago, 
Dungeons, you know, TSR, the creators of Dungeons and Dragons, created a board game called Dragon Strike, which my little brother got a copy of. Um, and it came with a videotape, you know, showing us some, um, oh, um, this, um, you know, shows us a little um, cheap adventure um, uh, stories and tells you how to play the game and all that. Kind of similar to Heroes Quest. In fact, it came out afterwards. But if you look at the video, you can easily look up the Dragon Strike video and you see the you know, the the game master unloading the miniatures. The miniatures in the video are not the same as the ones you actually get in a board game. In fact, for the fighter, he picks up this one as a plastic model. So I got this one for just that reason. It's a nice, simple barbarian type character in a loincloth, bare chest, and bare legs, you know, sword, buckler, you know, nice, good barbarian. Now, these next three, I again, I can't remember which one's which. They're all of similar design here. So again, if you're curious, um, I think this is like Sven Swift Hand. I like the sort of Nordic look, or your Lord of Rings, I look like a um, soldier of Rohan. Him, you know, with his hand outward, he's got a two-handed sword. You know, very Vikingish or very Normanish, that sort of thing. Chainmail looks very simple, you know. And again, I got two more of a similar design. We got this guy right here. Again, nice fur cloak. You know, sword, shield, got a bow. Careful there, I almost thought this was a piece of bare metal there. It's actually part of the bow, um, so careful not to break that off. You know, nice little shield there. Don't know what a design to it. Some of these shields that down these miniatures will have a design or or they're plain, so you can paint your you can paint on it. Here's the third one right here. Again, sort of shield, different shield. Um, actually, you'll see the similarities. Almost the same head there, different style helmet, um, body types the same, obviously different shield, one has a bow and arrow, one does not. You'll find many miniatures like these um, where they'll have the same pose or um, almost the same style, but you know they are different with where you could pick and choose. Here's a couple examples, this one right here, got an evil hero right here, you know, notice he's got a sword way out. Um, you know, plain shield, so I have to choose a design for that. I don't know. I don't know if I want to paint it plain, you know, or what have you. But again, you see how he's posed like this. Well, I got another one. Here's a kind of a you know, just a, this one's just called a lord. But look, they're you know, they have the same model template, almost a similar base. They probably had the same you know starting point armature that they built upon that. So this one more good guy, this guy more evil. So I make good opposing. Um, miniatures here. He doesn't have a shield, of course, and you know he has runes on his you know sword. So, but chances are he's going to be a quick paint you know painting right there. This is armored. He's got a little bit of runes right here. So yeah, very nice. I love this old classic look. A little cartoony, but not as cartoony as say Pathfinder, which I don't really care much for a lot of their cover art here. Here's this guy right here. Um, I think it's an evil hero or something like that. I don't, um, again, timestamp it, I'll look it up and I'll point to directly what it is. Cause some of the descriptions of these miniatures are like, uh, knight with sword, that sort of thing. You know, this guy, venturer, got a backpack, um, got some shield decorations here. I like his old, this looks like a weapon from the bronze age, you know, you know, that style looks like an old Greek sword. But, and this one, I won't, you know, you actually see his eyes. Normally, this is kind of, you know, pitted out to where, you know, you just kind of put a shading in it and just forget about it. This one, you can actually see the eye and a little bit of skin, so I have to be careful painting that. And his armor is a bit intriguing. Um, kind of looks like a, an owl a bit. So you can see, um, let's see if I have some more, more pointer. Um, just a minute. Uh, let's get a pencil here. So... Here you got the um, this eye in the center. There's a bit serves like a beak, and you got these little feather-like structures. So kind of you know has an old owl look. So I want to keep that in mind as I paint it. But uh, I like it. You know, kind of an evil avian sort of theme here. Now here's another female figure, and this one is Caldry Rune Sword. You know, I kind of like the Greek style. You know, kind of a um, High fantasy Celt slash um, Vikingish sort of um, style here. Got a Celtic style sword, 
and a shield kind of cloven but it looks like it's a wooden sword with some fabric or hide that's been peeling off so it looks you know, she looks like she's had her experience here again just a nice looking miniature here and okay moving on i got 26 of these guys so you just in this haul here's another knight with a sword um I was debating taking the ones, a lot of these knights I have had feathers on, you know, plumes on their helmets, I was thinking about, you know, taking that off, but I figured no, because you know, I sort of had this thought that even though individually you may not like certain details like that, but when you paint them up and put them all together, that variety really completes the picture. So it's a nice knight with a two-handed sword, I like the sword though. Plain and simple like the cross guards, nothing fancy or out of shape, you know, something that looks like it could have been historical. But yes, it's very nice there. Here's a, I think this is a Cavalier. I uh, could be wrong, so again, I'll if you just ask and I'll tell you what it is through the website. So yeah, just, um, he's got a nice little um, dragon or um, um, on his shield, flat helmet. Bit oversized in the axe, I'll give it that, but I don't find it too distracting. Not as much as what many designers do nowadays in their fantasies. All right, moving on here is another knight. This one right here, again, nice basic knight. Um, you know, got holding a sword two-handedly, got a backpack on, got a cloak, sleeveless cloak with some fur on it. So that would be interesting to, you know, maybe give it a sort of, um, like he's out for, you know, maybe some royal type or maybe out in the cold. No, again. So a lot of these I pick out just saying, ooh, that is neat, and I just pick it up and, you know, eventually paint it. This one right here I like. Sword is uh, a bit too plain, I mean, but it can work. I mean, it, I guess maybe it's because I'm, maybe it's just a regular knight. It doesn't have to be all fanciful and everything. And this one has a nice, fully illustrated shield. Um, looks like a dragon on the upper part, you know, maybe some three stars or points on the bottom here. So this one, I don't have to choose a design, it's already chosen for me, I just need to paint it up. So, I like that. And I got another knight, you know, last one that's that can serve as a knight right here. The only criticism I have about this one, and I was debating about changing it, is the sword. As you can see, it's like very narrow on the on near the hilt and then it flares out. Um, the only thing I think is like the old Bugs Bunny cartoon, like the singing sword, for those of you who haven't seen that one, they should. This one, the only decoration on the shields are these little points right here, so I may have to choose another design. Um, or just, you know, yeah, I could just paint it flat, but it doesn't quite look like it. My last miniatures, um, I sort of painted whatever designs I could, so it doesn't look completely flat. You know, I got a cloak. I like the helmet, the sail, you know, I think it's a salle, or at least uh, derived from that look. But... I, I enjoy, I like this one. This is a very nice one. Now here are uh, three miniatures, and again, like the two guys with the swords in the background here, the evil lord and the paladin, uh, or in the lord, evil, um, evil lord and just a regular lord. These ones are almost a similar pose, and they're rangers. So you can, if anything, you can go to the website there, look up ranger and see your selection. Here you go. Got a guy nicely hooded, got some sort of a scale mail. It could be leather, it could be, you know, metal, what have you. Sword out in the air. Excellent classic ranger look, arrows. Um, you know, it doesn't have a bow, but you can apply a bow, you know, based on the arrows. Could be underneath his cloak, awkwardly. Oh, no, wait, the bow's right here. Never mind. So, either way, nice, good, basic um, ranger. Here's another one. You know, one of them is called a ranger, one's called a um, tracker, but you get the idea. And again, if you want specifics, I'll t you know, link it, just ask down, and I'll link it down below. I know I say this hundreds of times, but, you know. I don't mind helping out where I can. So yes, nice, you know, different bit, you know, different armor, um, sword in different position, shield of course, and bow sticking out from the other side. Arizona again, they probably took the same template of a model and just you know build up in slightly different directions. Makes it easier to line up, you know. And this one right here, um, similar but definitely you know got a much bigger sword. Different pose, bow sticking out of his cloak. You know, he's holding his cloak now. I gotta warn you, um, the way the base is, these are very narrow, and this one is using the cloak here to sort of balance out. So it's gonna be tilting back a little bit. It's a little back heavy. So there you go. Now, this one, we're going into the creatures here. 
And let's start with this one. This is one of the ones I saw, you know, I ordered, even though I had a chance to get it years ago at the hobby store in Oklahoma City. It was one of those temptations. Eventually they moved their store and they sold this one, so I was out of luck until recently. This one is from um yeah, you know, Iron Wind Metals, but it's correlated it's um into it's part of the game of Arcana Evolved by Monty Cook. This is um let's see. Male Sebeki um just a minute. I'm looking on my invoice here. What is it called? Where is it called? Male Sebeki Champion. Basically, it's like a Egyptian style jackal that you'll see, like the god Anubis, and put it in Gothic armor and a giant two handed sword. And in the role, play, in the role playing game, World of the Apocalypse, my favorite tribe is the Silent Striders, which are jackal like appearance. So this was one of those major tempt tempting offers. It's just a nice looking miniature. I can't help but enjoy the long, you know, you know, sword and everything. So it's pretty neat. And also with our, you know, Arcana Evolved is this one. This is a male Latorian totem warrior. I don't know what it all means. I just know the game to associate with. Basically, it's a you know anthropomorphic lion with a nice good Chris sword. You know, that, you know, and got a crossbow. You have to glue in the back with his bolts. And you know, nice, good, intricate shield with a serpent on it, and just you know, in plate armor. And you know, I need to. I want to decide whether I want to paint this line in traditional colors or paint it white. You know, it's tempting either way. I'll have to find. I'll have to decide that later. But very nice. I like it. Now here we got to a couple werewolves, and this one is his name is Rolf. And I think that's a joke on the Muppet character Rolf, the dog that's a piano, a piano player. <laughs> but it's a nice, cool-looking werewolf. You know, the classic look of the, you know, it's, it's a, well, it got torn pants and everything. It's all running on all fours. This could be, this would have been excellent for games like Werewolf the Apocalypse or, or, more, or um, the gothic game like um, Ravenloft, you know, campaign setting in Dungeons and Dragons. So it's very nice. And there's another werewolf here. This one's pretty gruesome. I gotta give you a fair warning here. This is Locke. And, you know, very nice imposing in miniature. You know, and this one, it's gruesome because it's torn a person in half. There's one half here, the up head, arms, and torso, and its legs. Now, I'm to. This could have been a regular living person, could have been a vampire, could have been a zombie, depends on how you paint it up. So you have options here. But, you know, it's like it tore it off, it's howling at the moon and everything. I need to do some filing in the mouth. There was some flash right here. It's not perfect, but I gotta fix that here sometime later. And I figure when I'm done with this one, this is such a plain base here. I think I'll just uh, put grass on it. You know, um, some turf and all that. I haven't done that in a while. But anyway, very nice. But that's not the biggest miniature yet. This, here we got this one. Balefire Demon with Sword. And... This one's kind of like an old classically created creature derived from the Balrog of Lord of the Rings before the movies came out, mind you. Um, because when it comes to role play, when it comes to um, fantasy games, they tend to influence on the biggest form of um, uh, movies or books from the genre. And with Lord of the Rings movies that came out years ago, they then later taken everything from that they taken from Lord of the Rings and designed it roughly like that. This one, probably more classic approach of the class of the monster, the Balrog. Fair warning: if you like this miniature, the whip comes separately. It does not. It has the it has the um, arm attachment, the two wings, everything else, but it doesn't carry the whip. You have to get the nut. You know, it says on the website which what the parts code is. So you have to order that separately. But if you don't like the whip, you don't have to. So there you go. But that's even not the biggest one I got yet. That's this guy. Very similar to the Pit Demon. Or the, if the Bale of Fire Veen. This is a Pit Demon. Again, it's got a sword, big intricate sword, you know, um, fiery off the, uh, of the skull mouth of the, of the cross guard. It's got a whip curled into his hand. And this is one of those cases where the wings, they're put together separately, then you attach, you know, do you put the wings together? Then attach it to the back. Just fair warning there. It, I haven't 
tilted it over. It doesn't seem, it looks like it's want to tilt over this way, but it's just balanced where for your purposes, it should be all right. Although if you got a problem, you know, if you have a issue with a, with it, just put it on a slightly wider base. You get a plastic one, they're easy to find. But this one has the most massive wings compared to two. So put them aside, put them both together here. See, they're almost, you know, this one's a little slightly taller, but this one's hunched over. So they could be the same height, they just give this one bigger wings. And this one has um, clothing and armor and such forth. This one is just, you know, hair on, you know, a mane on its head and back, and it's got scales. So yeah, there you go. So there you go. This is 26 miniatures that I bought from Ironwind Metals, um, formerly known as Raul Partha. Sometimes it's um, sometimes it's called Raul Partha, especially in England. But there you go. I'll link the site down below. And again, if you have any questions or which um, you know timestamp the one you're talking about, I'll link it down below if you like that miniature or you can explore the site yourself you know they have a simple search engine fair warning their website is a bit old so you don't get perfect pictures of the ones you're trying to see newer ones you get a better one you'll get a better picture to expand on it but not as good like games workshop or all that but there you go fantasy miniatures from Ralph partha thank you all for watching and you have a nice day